Verse 1, and he shewed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. The Bible says it's a pure river of water of life. Yeah. In the Old Testament, prophets used the picture of the river to show expression of richness, prosperity, and peace, and growth. Psalms 46, 4 and 5, there is a river that streams the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy city of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved, and God shall help her, and that right early. One of the most essential things we can have in, in life is water. Right. We need it. We, we can go without a lot of things. It's food. We can't go without water very yeah, Or whether it's for us to drink, to quench a dry <clears throat> thirst, or whether it's to quench a dry, barren land, we need water. Oh, yeah. Yes, we do. Where the water flows, the fruit flows. <laughs> water brings forth life and it enables life. And this crystal river in heaven signifies the <clears throat> There will be no more want of anything, and it's a representation of eternal life. The water will absolutely be pure, there'll be no more pollution in it, no drain pipes, yeah. no, no, leaks. no leaks. No leaks. <laughs> Anybody ever heard of a uh, diaper tree? When I was in, uh, I was working in Mingo County one day, and I had an informant driving. We were driving down the road, and we were by the river. He looked out. It had just flooded. The water had receded. He said the diaper trees and pamper bushes are in full, <laughs> on full bloom. And I said, "What are you talking about?" He said, "See all those?" He said, "When the water goes up, over the diapers, pampers get caught in a tree limb." He said, "That's a diaper tree. <laughs> Won't be no more of those." Amen. <laughs> And admit, if you read this, my imagination ran wild with it. And I know that I can't do this less than any, any justice, and more than likely, not very many of us could. That's right. But we don't know what heaven's going to be like. Come on, Andy. That's right, brother. But in the midst of the street, street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. There will be a tree of life. And in Genesis chapter 3, 22 and 24, the Bible begins with the tree of life, which man was not allowed to eat from after the sin that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But here we see the tree of life again. And in the midst of it, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, this is what's kind of hard to picture. This is a landscape where you're talking about a golden street and a river flowing down the middle of it with big old fruit trees growing on both sides of the river. And I sat and I could imagine the limbs and those leaves <laughs> for the healing growing out over top of that river. Come on, Andy. Pretty, that's pretty scenery. Amen. The river of life flowing down in the middle of that bright city. <clears throat> like I said, the the fruit trees grow on both sides of the river, and the tree of life signifies the restoration of all things. It's a new heaven and a new earth, Boy. and this is a new life, and it's for eternity. And some people wonder if we'll get to eat in heaven. I think we will. John 21 and Luke 24 says Jesus enjoyed food in his resurrected body, yeah. and then when the angels of the Lord came to see Abraham to tell him that his wife was going to conceive a child. They enjoyed and they shared a meal together. One of the one of the aspects of it is the Bible describes that great homecoming in the air of the marriage supper of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're right, man. Praise the Lord. And the leaves of that tree were for the healing of the nations. Healing in the Greek actually means health giving. So mm -hmm. there's no more affliction. Oh yeah. And I like what Charles Spurgeon had to say about heaven. And quote, 
Even though this great chapter of the Bible tells us of heaven, we should think deeply about it and take it in now what we can. We do not suppose that a man is shooting at a target if he does not look that way. <laughs> Nor can we imagine that a man's ambition is fixed on heaven if he has no heavenward thoughts or aspirations. You're right, Amy. Verse 3, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Amen. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 3. Be no more curse. In heaven the curse is gone. Since the fall of man in Eden, you think of the curse that we live through. Oh, yeah. How we've had to work women with a married child, sorrow, pain, yeah. disease. Won't be any more of that in heaven. It'll be a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. And the curse of sin will be done away with. What we get to trade out for the curse is the throne of God and the Lamb that shall be in it. Glory. His servants shall serve Him. Heaven will be a place of work and of service for God. And we'll get to work with the Lord and for the, work for the Lord and with the Lord. We'll be able to look upon God and thank Him for all that He's done for us. <coughs> And, then, and we will have his self or seal of eternal ownership inscribed on our foreheads. That shows how much God loves you. He'll, he'll, he'll have his name sealed on our right. forehead. Yeah. Amen. We will literally and physically, with our resurrected bodies, look in the face of Jesus. And I want to examine his hands. Amen. Come on, man. And finally, like J.J. was talking about with those recipes, we'll be able to understand him more, understand his love more than, more than we do down here. Oh, yeah. That'll be one of the greatest glories of heaven is to know God and know Jesus more personally and wonderfully than ever before. Oh, yeah. And we'll be able to look upon Christ and that'll signify that he'll be and that we'll be acquainted with him. Shall be no more night there. Heaven will be a place where the age of darkness will forever be gone. No sun, no artificial light. The Bible says God Himself will be the light. Yes. And they shall reign forever. Heaven will be where God's people will enjoy the eternal reign, joy, and peace, and it will never end. Praise the Lord. The Bible opens with the story of paradise lost, and in Revelation, it's paradise regained. Oh, yeah. Bless you, my brother. And he said unto me, These things are faithful and true. The Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to shew unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the saying of the prophecy of this book. Yes. These are faithful and true. <clears throat> that angel that's speaking, he's shown these things to John, reminds him that he reminds him that this declaration is just not something that he's saying. He says it's surely and true. It's faithful and true. And these things that which must sh shortly be done, Jesus, Jesus then breaks into the conversation. He ends it with, I must, <clears throat> behold, I come quickly. Uh-huh. God wants us all to be expecting, watching, and ready. When I was studying on this, I got a little bit of fixia or fix it on the uh, water on the river. And like I said, I don't feel like I can do this this message a whole lot of justice. But Jesus actually wants us to be a river of life while we're waiting. Right. In the book of John, chapter, I'm almost done. In the book of John, chapter 7, Jesus promised that out of our innermost being, we flow a river of living water. That's right. 
and the backdrop of this. And I look forward to that river. I'm, I, I love rivers. Uh -huh. While I'm waiting, I want to be this river. In the chapter of John, the backdrop of this is it's a feast of tabernacles. And on the last day of the feast, the priest would take a golden flask and he would go from the temple down to a pool called the Pool of Salon. He'd draw that water out of the well, draw that water out of the pool. He'd bring that flask back up. He'd go back into the temple and he'd pour that water out in the altar. And Mishka, a writer, he says, He who has not seen the rejoicing of the place of the water drawing has never seen rejoicing. When he, that, he would pour that water out, they would start praising God. They'd start blowing the trumpet, start shouting. <coughs> and in verse somewhere 36, Jesus is standing there in the midst of that. And you got to think about it. Every feast, everything that they did like that, foreshadowed Jesus Christ. And they didn't know this yet, but there's Jesus standing. They're pouring out water by the altar, and there stands the real, real, real river yes. of water of life. Yes. And the Bible says, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, huh. out of his belly shall flow a river of water. Amen. Water. Amen. I want you to turn your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 47. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty I know we sing that song that was uh, about you kept running over. Jesus wants to actually, he wants your belly to be a flowing or a living water, a river of living water. And what I saw, and this is Jesus saying, as the scripture hath said, he that believeth on me as the scripture has said, the New Testament hadn't been written at this time. Mm -hmm. But there's actually, and that exact scripture is not found in the Old Testament, but there's actually a, uh, there's actually an illustration of it in Ezekiel 47. And afterward he brought me again unto the door of the house, and behold, the waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward, the forefront of the house, and stood toward the east. And the waters came down from under from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then brought me, then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without unto the other gate by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, the waters, there, there, there ran out the waters on the right side. And when the man had line in his hand, went forth east, Eastward he measured a thousand cubits and brought me through the waters and the waters were to the ankles. Again he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters and the waters were to the knees. Again he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters were to the loins. Afterward he measured a thousand and it was a river mm. that I could not pass over. <laughs> for the waters had risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed. Sounds like a lot to that, but that actually applies to you. Mm -hmm. It actually applies to the Christian. Jesus said, if you thirst and come into him, out of you will flow the river of living water. That's true. And that house is the temple. And you got to think about in the Old Testament, the temple foreshadowed today the New Testament Christian. Mm -hmm. And this is, a, this is a prophecy into the New Testament. <coughs> And he's talking about a supernatural river here coming out of the temple, or the temple. In the Old Testament, God had a temple for his people, but in the New Testament, he has a people for his temple. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And that water's coming from you as the temple. Amen. Paul even says, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost that dwells in you? As I read what this represents, water first comes out of the threshold. How high is the threshold? Come on, Andy. It's ankle deep. It talks about walking in the spirit. Yes. And he measures on out about a thousand cubits. It's up to his loins, going past his knees. He 
loins in your Bible is known to be the strongest center point in your body. Mm -hmm. And you measure it on out another thousand cubits. It's up to your chest, up to around your heart. And that's when you're swept away by the Spirit. Yes. Amen. And again, while I'm waiting on that river of life in heaven, I won't be that river here on earth. Bless you. Bless you, my brother. Amen. Good job.